Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. We are so happy to finally bring this video to you guys. Um, if you watch our vlogs, you will see that I've talked about that we were getting a new truck a few times. Um, it has finally happened. Our last truck, whenever you see the last vlog, we broke down. Um, the owner that we drive for, he actually surprised us uh, with the brand new truck, so we are super excited. So today I'm bringing you the official truck tour of our brand new 2020 Freightliner Cascadia with a custom bolt sleeper. So as you can see, this is the front end of the new truck. We do have the new body style. We absolutely love this body style. I think it's so beefy, it's sexy, I love it. Uh, I wanted to point out one thing on the front here. Uh, you can see this black box. Um, this black box will actually talk about a little bit more, but I just wanted to point that out and let you know that that is on the front of the truck. But like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. So starting over here on the driver's side, uh, this is our battery compartment. I just wanted to point out that this truck does have solar panels. The solar panels are actually mounted on top of the box. Um, that is really handy. Our last truck did not have those. The truck before that did. Um, the owner really likes having those on the trucks. It does help keep the batteries charged, especially when you're in sunny environments. Um, so that way we don't have to run the generator as much. So very nice feature that we have there. Coming on down, this is the first compartment on the sleeper. Um, as I mentioned, just like our last truck, we do have a bathroom truck. So this is what this area is. And as you can see, we do have a Thetford cassette toilet. Uh, this is the area for that. Uh, one thing that is different is our last truck actually had its own feel for the flusher for the toilet that we had to fill up right here. Uh, that was on an AA sleeper. This is a Bolt custom sleeper. And the way that they did it on this truck is they actually plumbed it right into the main tanks. So we do not have a separate feel for the toilet. This is actually plumbed into the main tanks. And uh, as long as we have water in the main tanks, then we have water for the flusher. Uh, this is super easy to take out. It's just one button, it slides out, super easy to empty, do what we gotta do. Slide that right back in. One person can do it, super easy. We do have extra large toolboxes on this truck. They open up super wide and it makes for very easy uh, getting in and out of those. Uh, on this side, we've actually got a lot of clothes and things. Uh, we have not been home in a while um, recently to clean the truck out. We didn't know we were getting this truck. So we still have a lot of winter clothes and things like that that we didn't want to put in a sleeper and that's what we have down here. So this compartment here, this is the main water supply for the truck. Um, excuse the mess, like I said, we just got into the truck so we don't have everything situated just yet. But this is the hose that we use to hook up to a water faucet to fill the water. And then back here is the main water tank. We do have a 30 gallon water tank along with a 10 gallon hot water heater. So we have 40 gallons total. So here is one of our fuel tanks. We do have two 80 gallon fuel tanks on this truck. Um, you can probably see this little white box down here. Uh, this is actually the battery for the reefer. So it does run off of its own battery supply. It is not tied into the main batteries of the truck. We do have a 20 foot Morgan box. Uh, for a D unit with FedEx Custom Critical, you have to have at least 20 feet uh, available to the customer. So this is a 20 foot box. Um, it is insulated, it is also a reefer, and we will show you the reefer whenever we open up the back of the truck. On this truck, we do have a twin screw. Our last truck was actually a lift axle and a single drive axle. Um, so I do enjoy having the twin screw. Uh, the lift axle, they tend to have a lot of issues with maintenance, uh, wearing out the tire, things like that. So I do like the fact that we have a twin screw. We do have dual placards all the way around the truck. Uh, we do a lot of hazmat with FedEx Custom Critical. We have the built-in placard. We also have one that we can slip placards down into. Um, so this is a very nice feature as well, having the built-ins. 
So just like our last truck, we do have a Waltco liftgate. This is a 4,000 pound liftgate. Uh, we do a lot of liftgate loads with FedEx Custom Critical. So this is part of the required white glove equipment. We've had layman lift gates in the past. Uh, this one tends to be a little bit more reliable. All right, so now we're gonna open up the back of the box and show you what the inside looks like. So this is the inside of the box. Uh, this is actually uh, a lot of our equipment that you see at the front, load bars, pallet jack, things like that. Um, you can also see the reaper up there at the top. We are running one of the new Reaper uh, styles. Uh, normally they do the Thermo King T880, and we do have one of the newer ones. We have the Thermo King T890. And you can also see the four probes at the top of the box. Uh, that is whenever you hear me talk about t valve on our logs. Uh, those are the probes that keeps uh, recording the temperature and uh, sends that back to FedEx and they have a printout for the customer. One thing we really like about this truck is we did not have this on the last truck, but these little side steps, uh, it makes folding out, climbing up into the truck super easy. Uh, like I said, that was something we did not have on the last truck, but super excited to have that on this one. We're on the passenger side of the truck now. This is the toggle switch for the lift gate. Just goes up and down, operates the lift gate from here. Here we have a smaller toolbox. In this toolbox, we actually just have some equipment like blankets, uh, odds and end things, equipment for FedEx. So that's all we have in here. And then here we do have the uh, our generator. Uh, so this is actually a brand new unit. Our last truck, we had an Onan generator. Uh, one thing that I like about the Onan is they provide a lot of power and they're super quiet. This generator is a brand new unit, uh, very powerful. I'm not sure of the wattage output. I'll have to clarify that and I'll try to put a comment down below. But uh, this is a brand new unit from Dynasys. So far, we've been using it for probably a week. Uh, we've only been in the truck about a week and it's been running flawlessly. One thing I do like about the larger generators is especially in the summer months, when you're running the rooftop AC, when you're running the cooktop, when you're charging computers and phones and, and have a lot of things going inside the truck, um, these larger generators can keep up. You don't have an issue with power, uh, you know, if you're using the convection oven and things like that. Uh, and like I said, this one has not let us down. I know it's brand new, but it provides a lot of power and it makes running everything inside the sleeper super easy. So very happy with this so far. So that white box right there underneath the sleeper, that is actually our shore power hookup. So we do have a regular 110 plug, as well as we have a 30 amp plug that we can hook up like at campgrounds and things like that and have power for the entire sleeper without having to run our generator. So here we do have the other fuel tank, 80 gallon fuel tank on this side. And then we do have another large toolbox up front. And on this side, we have little things uh, that is more personal items. Uh, we do have some chairs that we like to pull out whenever the weather is nice, uh, but just odds and end things that we have personal items on this side. So in this cabinet on this side of the sleeper, there's really nothing in here except for one thing. This is the HVAC unit for the sleeper uh, whenever we're going down the road. So when we're parked, we use the rooftop AC and we also have a separate heater. So this is all of that in here for that uh, when we're driving down the road. Um, we have the heat and AC unit and all of that that runs under the bed. And you can also see the water tank from this side as well. Uh, the water tank does stretch the entire width of the sleeper. So this little black box right here, uh, we will talk a little bit more about this once we get inside, but this works in conjunction with the black box you've seen on the front of the truck. Um, and then, like I said, they work together and we will talk about a little bit more about that once we get inside the cab. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up the outside of the truck tour. So let's go ahead and hop inside and let me show you the cab as well as the sleeper, which is what I know most of you are here to see.
So yeah, guys, now we are inside the brand new 2020 Freightliner Cascadia. Uh, we absolutely love this new body style. The dash and everything on the new Cascadia is completely different from the last one that we had. I love technology and I'm loving all of the new bells and whistles on, on the inside of this truck. So let me start off by talking about the seats. Um, they're not leather, but they're like a leatherette type material. Uh, super comfortable, super easy to sit in for long periods of time. We had this option on not the last truck, but the truck before that. Um, and we didn't have it on our last truck, but we have it back now. And that is the option for heated and cooled seats. Um, our last truck just had heated seats, so it's very nice to have the cooled seat option back again, uh, especially hot summer days and you're out west. Um, it's our, we're out in California right now, and uh, yesterday it was 102 degrees, so having the cooled seats really, really makes the comfort setting just that much higher. The steering wheel is got the steering wheel controls for options that we didn't have in our previous truck. Um, over here on this side is mainly your controls for everything on the dash. And then on this side, we have our cruise as well as your light interrupt for the front and back um, to thank someone uh, for flashing you over or to flash someone over with the headlights. Uh, we also have Bluetooth built into the uh, stereo. So we have the option here to uh, answer and uh, decline phone calls. Um, lots of tons and tons of options um, on the dash, tons of uh, new features and things. One thing that we do have on this truck that we've never had before, that is um, what those boxes that you've seen outside on the passenger side and the black box in the front. This truck does have um, adaptive cruise. We do have lane departure warning as well as we have blind spot monitoring. So I've never had those options before, um, but they are options that I've already fallen in love with. Um, I know in the past there's been systems that a lot of drivers didn't like. Um, they said that it would stop the truck abruptly and things like that. This is completely different. We've had no issues just driving the truck for a week and I'm sure that I'm going to get even more used to it the longer we have the truck. Um, you can see here in the windshield there's a black box and this actually houses two cameras up here in this uh, unit here. Um, and that works in conjunction with all of the other systems that we have on the truck. So the first one that we have is the adaptive cruise. Uh, you can set the cruise, let's say you set it at 65 miles an hour, and as you're going down the road, if you come up on a vehicle that is traveling slower than you are, it uses radar, which is the black box you've seen in the front of the truck, and it will automatically judge your distance, calculate a safe stopping distance, and keep you behind that vehicle. So if you're traveling at 65 and the vehicle in front of you is only doing 55, it'll slow you down enough to where you have a safe stopping distance behind that vehicle. Um, as soon as you put on your blinker and start to get over and there's no one in the passing lane, the radar senses that, the cameras see that, and you automatically speed back up. Um, Another nice thing about the adaptive cruise is if you get into stop and go traffic, um, on this unit, it will go all the way down to zero miles per hour. Um, something that's very useful, actually, you don't think about it, but when you're in that situation, you don't have to constantly hit the brake or the gas, the truck takes care of it for you. Um, so if, if you slow down and you're all the way down to zero and within, I believe it's three seconds, um, as long as the car in front of you starts moving, the truck will maintain a safe follow distance and stay with that vehicle. Um, if they are stopped longer than three seconds, then it will automatically apply the service brake and you have to tap the gas to get it to go again. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the adaptive cruise, loving it so far. The other feature is the blind spot monitoring. So that is the black box that you've seen on the passenger side. And what that does is pretty much from the front of the cab to the back of the sleeper at a V like this, um, it will actually detect any vehicles that is beside you. Um, we have a light in the pillar on the passenger side. And what that light does is whenever someone is in our blind spot um, over there on the passenger side, it will light up yellow with an exclamation mark in it. Just to let you know, there is a vehicle over there. Now, let's say I put on my right turn signal or I turn the steering wheel in that direction. Then that light will turn red 
and it will then make an audible alert to let you know, hey, someone is on this side of the vehicle. Don't turn, don't come over here. Not only will it pick up vehicles, but it will also pick up people as well as bicycles, as well as signs. Um, it'll pick up stop signs, uh, any signs that may be in your area, trees, um, light poles. Uh, what it does is as you're making a turn, let's say you're in a city or something, so it will use the radar coming out of that box. And if it projects that you're going to hit a light pole or something that's in the path, the red light will go off and make an audible beep to let you know, hey, don't continue on the path you're on. You're gonna hit whatever is in the way. Um, the last feature that we have on this truck is lane departure. So that uses primarily the camera that is in the windshield and that camera detects the lines on the road, um, left and right. So as you're going down the road, if you happen to cross that line, it will make an audible alert in the stereo speakers on whatever side of the vehicle, whatever side of the line you cross. So if you happen to cross the right, it's gonna make it over on the right. If you cross on the left, the audible sound is gonna to come to the left. And that does come through the stereo speakers. I think construction is the only time it really goes off. And when you are in construction, we have a button here on the dash that we can smash. And whenever we smash this button, it does disengage the lane departure warning for 15 minutes. Um, to get you through the construction and then it reactivates. So yeah, that's a brief overview of all of the safety features that we do have on this truck. Um, you know, pretty much everything else is standard. I do like the way they place the buttons on the dash and everything. Uh, everything is just in a line, it's very clean. We do have the DT12 transmission in this truck. We had the same transmission in the last truck. Absolutely one of the best in the industry. We love this transmission. Um, it has a lot of features and I may do a separate video on that one day. Uh, but the DT12 is an awesome transmission. It's fully automatic, um, does everything for us. We don't have to do anything. And um, yeah, it's, it's just overall a great captain's seat, great Freightliner. Uh, I think the, they really, really hit it out the ballpark with this one. We're loving it. So compared to our last truck, we had an AA sleeper. In this truck, we do have a Bolt sleeper. Uh, if you happen to seen the truck tour of our last truck, we had a wide open shelf going through here. I actually like the way Bolt does it better. Uh, we actually have cabinets up here. As you can see, um, we have one over here on the side, then we have two that are up front here, and then we have another one on this side. In this particular cabinet over here, um, I just have some of my cameras and different things like that that I keep in this area. And then in this cabinet, we just have a couple cleaning supplies, uh, truck stuff that we have up here, business cards, things like that. We also have these large cabinets here. Um, I keep my headset in here. I keep some other cameras, uh, DJI, Osmo Action, and GoPros and things like that in here. So that is my personal side. And then Don has his own over here as well that he keeps a lot of his stuff on. Um, we do have more things in here like FedEx paperwork, just things that we need for doing our runs and stuff. And then this is a personal cabinet for Don. Um, on this side, we do have our Netgear uh, Wi-Fi mounted over here. Uh, this is a business account. It is unlimited. We do not get slowed down on that. Uh, we like the Netgear because we're able to connect up to 15 devices at once. So this does keep everything in the truck powered with Wi-Fi. And uh, like I said, we do have unlimited on that. Here in the center, we do have our CB mounted. I uh, need to get a mount for the mic because we have not mounted that yet we just got that sitting up here uh, we don't listen to the cb a whole lot but it does come in handy sometimes when you're stuck in traffic um, and then we also have a couple of our customers that we go to where you do have to have a cb to be able to talk to security at check-in and stuff like that so yeah guys that pretty much sums up the cab of the cascadia so let's go ahead and go into the sleeper and show you all of that guys so now we are inside of the sleeper of our brand new truck super excited to show you guys this so this is a bolt custom sleeper 110 inch and i'm just going to basically start over here on the passenger side and we'll work our way around and show you everything 
Uh, as you can see, the countertop, the colors, uh, we did get to pick these out. The owner of the truck um, allowed us to pick the color, so we're super excited to do that. Uh, I think they turned out very well. Uh, one thing, whenever you're choosing colors for a truck, all you get to look at are these little swatches and these little palettes. So you don't get an idea of what the whole truck is gonna look like until you kind of see the finished product. And um, so we're super excited that it turned out like this. I think it really, really goes well together. Love the darker cabinets. Uh, these are wood cabinets, but I actually love these. Uh, the lighter countertops, it just kind of makes the truck seem not as small. Uh, starting over here on the left, as you can see, we do have a sound bar right here. Uh, we are in the process of maybe swapping this out. Bose just announced a brand new one uh, that is actually smaller than this. It's gonna come out in about four weeks, so we'll probably be swapping that out soon whenever that comes out. But as of right now, we do have the Bose Solo 5 sound bar. Next, we have the sink. Um, here we do have this cover that goes over the sink and then we have the faucet here. One nice touch here is this does pull out so it makes cleaning the sink, washing dishes, things like that a whole lot easier and then it just goes up out of the way. Whenever we need the extra counter space this comes in handy so we can cover that up and be able to use this as countertop as well. Uh, if you can notice here, this is where we do have our DVR DirecTV mounted. Uh, we do have a DVR system. We only have one LMB on the satellite, so it only records one feed at a time. So you have to watch what you're uh, recording. However, that comes in handy for whenever we are running down the road. We do have in motion satellite. So if there is a program that we wanna watch later, we can always record it and then watch it at a later date. So we do like having that. Next, we have our lovely coffee pots. Everybody knows that coffee is a trucker's best friend. So here we do have the Keurig and we also have an espresso, espresso machine. Uh, this, I really didn't want, this was Don's idea. Um, and then once we got it, I think I use it more than him. I actually love this. It's very quick. Uh, next, behind here, we do just have a few little cubby holes as you can see back here. And we've got some odds and end items placed back there. We do have a nice big window here in the center. Um, I don't have it opened up right now because we do have these covers over the windows. They do help hold in the uh, AC, uh, helps insulate the sleeper, especially during the hot months and the winter months. And right now we are in California and it's like 100 degrees out here. So we'd still have these on the windows to help insulate that and keep the AC in. Up here, we do have two cabinets here. We just have a bunch of plates, different things. We have not really organized anything yet, so please excuse the mess. The things that we use uh, on a daily basis are in here. We have some pots and pans and cleaning supplies up here. Here we do have a microwave slash convection oven. This is a Cuisinart. We've already used it a couple of times. Works wonders, love it. We are excited to uh, test out a lot of new things in there. Don is the cook of the family, so this is mainly his area. <laughs> um, over here on this side of the counter, we do have a built-in cooktop. Uh, this is an induction cooktop. And one nice thing about this one is compared to the last truck, the last one was recessed. This one is actually flush with the countertop. So it makes cleaning a whole lot easier. Our last one would get crumbs and everything down and around it because it was recessed by about that much. Uh, but this one being flush is a whole lot easier to clean. I do like that. Um, under here, we do have the Nova Cool under counter fridge. Uh, this is a side by side. So we do have the fridge on this side and then we do have a full freezer on this side really like the under counters they are huge you have to kind of get down in there and get back in there because they're so deep but they are huge and it doesn't take up your counter space which i really like here we do have the majority of the controls for the sleeper uh, this is just for the water pump this is for the rope lights that you see here this first box here is for the inverter while we are driving down the road it provides power to the sleeper this is for our AC controls. This is the control panel for the new Dynasys generator that we have, which is what we use whenever we are stopped. It runs the rooftop air and all the power in the sleeper. And then this is our HVAC unit for whenever we are driving down the road. So this gives us heat and uh, AC in the sleeper for going down the road. 
Next, we do have three large drawers down here. Just have a lot of odds and ends. This first drawer is a half drawer. Uh, we've got it filled basically with medicine, different things that we need. Um, it's a half drawer because of the plumbing of the sink and everything. The other two drawers are full-size drawers. Coming on around here to the top, in this tall cabinet, we do have just some food items. Uh, we have some spices, different things like that in there. We have another large cabinet here that we have quite a bit of stuff in. This cabinet actually stretches all the way to the back of the sleeper, so that's very handy there. Here, the truck did come with a Blu-ray player. We actually took the Blu-ray player out and we put in the PS4. Don does enjoy playing games on the PS4, so we went ahead and put that here, mounted that. We do have the external hard drive plugged into the back of it, and then the controller's here for that. So it's very easy to just grab the controller, start playing, and we don't have to bring anything out, and hook anything up, and then break it all down when we have to leave. It's nice having everything just mounted there and ready to go. We have another large window back here. Um, and then I do like having the cup holders. Our last truck, and they put the cup holders down here by the seat. Uh, Bolt puts cup holders up here by the windows. I think I like this better. Uh, this over here is the control for our in-motion satellite. So we can just flip a switch there and turn that on. And then here we do have the dinette set. So whenever the bed is up against the wall, as you can see, we have a built-in dinette set with two bench seats on either side. It does have the cup holders placed into the table, which we do like that. We did not have that on our last truck, so. Usually the bed is down because we try to stay moving as much as possible. However, we are wanting to use the dinette set a bit more, especially for whenever I'm editing YouTube videos and different things like that. So hopefully we'll be able to put this up a lot more in the future. Back here on the back wall, we do have two large cabinets. This is Don's side, this is mine. Uh, we just basically have a lot of our fold up clothes in here. Over here, we do have another cabinet on this wall, which is the same as the other side, and it stretches all the way back to the back of the sleeper. We have another large window over here, along with a little cubby space back here on the back wall. One thing that we do have in this sleeper that we've had in every truck we've ever had, uh, we do have an S-Bar heater. The S-Bar heater is for whenever we are parked, uh, that does provide heat, it runs off of the diesel, and it will actually get so hot, it will run you out of here. I love the S-Bar heater. Speaking of the heater, another one that we do have is we have a rooftop AC system. Whenever we are parked, we do run the rooftop AC during the summer month. You can see these black vents here, and they are uh, ducted air for the AC. So you can actually turn these, you can close them, um, and it just makes to where you don't have a lot of air flooding out of the center of the AC unit. So we do like the ducted air. Another thing this truck has is we have an electric heater as well. So if the S-Bar heater ever goes out, we do have a heat strip that is in the AC unit. Only keeps the truck around 50 degrees or so, but we do have that option if we ever lose this heater, we can start the generator and run the electric heater. We do have a uh, fan that they have put in. Uh, this fan is actually a lot larger than the previous one that was in the last Bolt sleeper that we had. So we are excited to see if this one works a lot better than that little small one that Bolt used to use. But this is uh, probably about two times the size of the previous one. So. We haven't got to test it out just yet. And continuing on, on this side of the sleeper, we do have two full-size closets here. The bottom one here does have a hanging rod in it, so that way we can hang up our work shirts for FedEx, jackets, things like that. The top one is kind of wide open space, and we tend right now, Don has the bottom part, I have the top part, and uh, we just have book bags and different things uh, up in there for extra storage right now. And lastly, on this side of the truck is uh, our lovely bathroom and shower. So this is the inside of the shower slash bathroom. One cool feature of this bathroom is we do have a waterproof toilet paper holder. So whenever you open it up, you have your toilet paper, you do what you gotta do. And then when you close it, it will roll the toilet paper back up inside for you and keep everything nice and dry. The other thing that's a bit different about this bathroom compared to the last truck, our last truck actually had the toilet just permanently mounted in on this side. 
This one's kind of mounted on the side of the wall here. And as you can see, this is the way you would have it if you were showering. Uh, so you would have plenty of room to move around in here and do what you got to do. Um, whenever you need to use the restroom, all you got to do is simply bend over. The toilet turns, you have more room to do what you got to do, and then you can always turn it back whenever you need to shower and have more room on the shower side. Another nice thing that I like about this bathroom compared to the last truck is we do have a nice floor covering. It just keeps you from standing flat on the floor. So I do like that. That way, whenever you shower, if you come in here later and you have to use the restroom, the floor is not all wet because most of the water will drain through to the bottom of the floor and out the drain. I do like that as well. The last thing that is different about this shower compared to our last one is our last one just had a shower curtain. In here, we do have a plastic door for whenever we are showering. And the nice thing about this one is whenever you close it, it is an automatic squeegee as well. So when it retracts back, it squeegees the water off and keeps water from going out into the sleeper. All right, guys. So. This is our bed whenever it is down. This is how it is the majority of the time. So one thing you may notice is the restraints along the back. Uh, these are a safety device for whenever we are going down the road. For whoever is laying in the bed getting their 10 hours of rest, um, we can actually pull that over us. It snaps in the front here and it kind of acts like a seat belt. So that way if something was to happen, Lord forbid there was an accident, um, then we are a little bit safer the net safety net is supposed to catch us to keep us from flying out of the bed but yeah this is uh what the bed looks like whenever it is down and this is how it is the majority of the time because uh we try to save running as much as possible so yeah guys that's pretty much everything going around the sleeper now one thing you may have noticed earlier when i was talking about the direct tv the sound bar the playstation 4 you're probably wondering well where's the tv well one thing that we did differently in this truck is we wanted to save as much counter space as possible because this is the area behind the sink where they normally mount a TV in this area. So we had the sink moved to the very bottom down here. To save counter space, we actually had the TV mounted on the ceiling. This was an option that we wasn't quite sure about. Once we actually seen it, I think it turned out very well. You can see the TV from all angles sitting at the dinette set. You can see it sitting on the bed. Even if you're laying in bed, you can still see the TV at the perfect viewing angle. Um, this is the last truck tour that I did. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. Um, but yeah, so we have everything run through the ceiling, all the wires, the PS4, the direct tv everything is wired through the ceiling and it comes down into the back and we actually also have the apple tv mounted on the back of the tv so when we put the tv up it actually had plenty of room for the apple tv to mount back there and so when we put it up against the ceiling it just fits perfect <laughs> So I did want to give a big shout out to High Fill Trucking. They are the guys that we drive for. Um, awesome people to work for and we cannot thank them enough for the brand new truck that they put us in. Um, we've been waiting on this for a very long time and we are just super excited to finally have it. So thank you so much to High Fill Trucking. Hashtag High Fill Family. Um, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We are truly, truly grateful to be in this brand new truck. So guys, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We really, really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the tour of our new home away from home. As always, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you love that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow along on our journey out here on the road. As always, keep those wheels a turning. And until our next video, take care, everybody.